It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Welcome back to the program from the Patriots of X746. We got Mr. Dan Borum on the line. Dan, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm good this morning, Paul. How about you, buddy? Man, I am doing fantastic. I want to remind everybody that the Patriots Vex 746, you guys are on a mission to educate the citizens of Arkansas on their gun rights. Uh, Arkansas is a constitutional carry state thanks to a 2013 law, which means you can carry a weapon open or concealed without a permit. And uh, and if you want more information, go to uh, go to Facebook.com and click on or type in, rather, Patriots of X746 in the search bar and ask to become a member of their group of 17,000 strong plus Patriots. So, uh, Dan, um, are you, you keeping a close eye on what's going on in the 92nd General Assembly? Oh, we're trying uh, our very best to keep a close eye on it. You know, there are some of us that are working constantly, and we have others that, uh, yes, they have busy lives as well, but we try to come home at nights and after we take care of our families and sit down and, and do our best to go through uh, some of these bills. And certainly we can't go through all of them. And really, uh, as many that are coming out, I, I really can't expect uh, my representative to be able to see all of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that is a problem. Uh, you know, you're talking about 2,000-something bills, and they got to uh, exactly. fi- figure out what they're all going to do. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, I, I know there's a few bills you wanted to go over on the program today. Let's start, right. let's start with um, – SB5, Senate Bill 5, by Senator Trent Garner, mm-hmm. Larry Teague, and uh, Representative Watson. Uh, what does this bill do? Basically, uh, from what I read, the bill just makes the uh, shotgun the, the state uh, the state gun. This one actually uh, is the knife. This is to designate the Bowie knife. Okay, as yes. The uh, SB5, state is knife. The, SB5 is the Bowie knife, and SB6 is the shotgun. Yeah. Uh, thank you. But yes, SB five makes uh, the Bowie knife the state knife. Um, I guess as far as um, as far as history goes, and uh, for tourists that's coming through and they want to look up our state and see what our state bird is, our state flower. Well, I guess it'd be pretty nice to see what the state knife is as well. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, uh, uh, as far as uh, as far as our group, we we neither oppose it nor do we support it. Uh, it's really, it's trivial in considering what all our state is going through right now, the, the, the importance of, of looking at some of these bills that has life changing effects for the citizens in Arkansas, uh, bills such as SB five and SB six, uh, it really doesn't carry much water with us. Okay. And you know, when I saw it, I, I thought, um, all right, all right, cool. You know the 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 Bowie knife, sure. the Bowie knife. All right, that's it. You know, right. It uh, is right. is what it is. And that's the same thing with this next one, SB six uh, by Senator There's Trent Garner, an act to designate an official state firearm to designate the shotgun as the official state right. firearm and for other purposes. That's kind of the same. Um, you guys kind of feel the same way about that, right? Basically, yes. And and like I say, we we don't oppose it, but right. Neither are we involved in in trying to support this and calling our legislators to support this. It's to to us, it's just not that of a of an important issue to be bothering our legislators to vote yay or nay on these two bills when we have bills that are very pressing that that definitely changes the lives of Arkansans. Yeah. You know, I will say in this particular bill by Senator Gardner on the shotgun, if you read Section 1, the changes, uh, what they're adding here is legislative findings and intent. The General Assembly finds that the right to hunt, fish, trap, and harvest wildlife is a right Uh guaranteed by the Arkansas Constitution. For some reason, the Arkansas Game and Fish pops into my mind when I read that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. it, it's almost kind of like a, you know, Robin Hood. Are we are we really allowed to uh, hunt in the king's forest, you know, right. without his permission? Right. And so I understand what you're saying. Yeah, 18 the king's meat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, well, yeah, I've often wondered, and there was, I think maybe that was, there was, there was you know, they remake Robin Hood. Hollywood remakes Robin Hood like every two years. So in one of the renditions. Right. 
Uh, in one of the renditions, I think they talked about how, um, you know, the, the these deer that and and the wildlife and things like that are, are God's gift to man, like all of men, before like it's government's responsibility. And of course, that's something that is not we do not see that in our um, we do not see that in Arkansas or, or really any state. I mean, we have the you know Arkansas Game and Fish. They're constitutionally they constitutionally exist, and they're the most, in my opinion, the most powerful agency in the state. And there really has not been any uh, stomach to try to curb some of their power. There have been some court decisions that have weakened their power right. in the last couple of years, which has been good. And, you know, that's something uh, that may be coming down the pike, you know, later later on down in the, in the future. But uh, that's something that we're going to keep a close eye on. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, for the for the liberty of the people, definitely. Uh, then there's House Bill 1036. How, oh, let me, hang on, yes. let, let me stop before we get to House Bill 1036. I think one, and maybe I'm wrong here, Dan, but back to the game and fish. I think it could be very simple. I think if you elected uh, your your game and fish, uh, uh, you know, wardens or whatever they're called, if you if you right. if the people elected them, I think things might be a little bit different. But that's just me. Um, <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. I kind of like that myself. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't understand why that. I mean, you're you're giving somebody authority over like the region of wildlife that people. I mean, and I think I just think you know, especially hunters and uh, people who are actually, um, you know, out in you know the the wilderness and foraging and things like that. I think they should have a direct say as to who's going to be enforcing you know these laws. But that's just me. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so House Bill 1036, tell us about House Bill yes, 1036. Sir. There's a lot of co-sponsors on this one to reduce the cost of concealed carry. What are your thoughts? Well, when you look at the uh, decision of uh, Taft versus the state of Arkansas, I think that has an impact upon it. Uh, it's going to, what that bill is going to do is reduce the uh, cost of the uh, concealed carry permit. And it, it needs to be reduced. But one thing that we want to stress is that people who are purchasing the concealed carry permit needs to understand that Arkansas is a constitutional carry state. I was talking to some coworkers yesterday about this about this bill, and and uh, they still didn't know the law in Arkansas. And I was able to enlighten them on the law, and they were they were shocked. They said, "You mean we can actually carry a weapon in Arkansas without a permit?" I said, yes, we are constitutional carry. Now, if you so desire to have the permit for reciprocity, then so be it. Go ahead. And uh, there's actually a bill coming out that's going to reduce the cost, and it should be reduced. And so, once again, uh, coming from the standpoint of a group that supports constitutional carry, uh, sure, I'm, it's a wonderful thing to reduce the cost of a concealed carry permit. But we're not going to, uh, you know, just get behind anything that deals with concealed carry when we are fighting, not only in this state, but we would love to see across the nation for states to follow like suit yeah. of being constitutional carry and having that type of reciprocity, mm -hmm. such as in Oklahoma, if our attorney general will come out and publicly recognize that we are a constitutional carry state, then Oklahoma will recognize that, and I can carry in Oklahoma in the same manner that I carry in Arkansas. That's yeah, what we really need. Yeah, it, you're exactly right. We need that, and uh, the Taft decision is clear. The judge read the law as yes, is. I mean, it's, it's verifying everything the Patriots of Act 746 has been saying for, for five years. Um, you know, what I would also really like, and maybe this is a baby step, but it would be great if there was a piece of legislation filed, and I don't know if this would be a bill, or it would just be some sort of joint resolution that encourages right. the Arkansas State Police to market their concealed handgun license as a reciprocity license. So to admit Bingo. we're a constitutional right. carry state, but then say, but you still need and tell people they need it uh, if they want to travel outside the state of Arkansas and protect their family and their possessions on, on the roads. I think I think that is the 
that's such a winner. I mean, that is a winning. If you if you'll if you'll just admit the law is what it is, whether you like it or not, right? And you will, you know, uh, start marketing it towards people who want to protect their families when they travel outside the border. That is a genuine service the Arkansas State Police would be providing the people of Arkansas, and people would still go and they'd they'd go get their their concealed carry license. So. It'd be great if the legislature, Absolutely. and I don't know if that's a, an actual bill or some resolution. I, you know, I'd, I'd prefer it to have teeth, um, but right. I, that's where they need to go, I hear. I don't understand why they just won't do that. Well, the thing is, is we, we, we do have that. We have legislation that declares Arkansas as a constitutional carry state. And so why will they not just come out and do as you have said? I, I echo what you have said. If they would just come out and say, look, we are constitutional carry, but we still offer the concealed uh, handgun carry license in case you want to travel out of state, if you're going into states that still requires a permit, then go ahead. We, we are going to offer this service to you so when you travel that you can have reciprocity and so you can feel safe to carry a weapon while you are uh, to defend your family if necessary. Mm -hmm. If they would say that, we would sing their praises. You know, thank you for finally recognizing the law and doing the right thing and reducing your fees. Yeah. That would be a wonderful thing, Paul. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe there's an amendment. You know, you could put an amendment in something like this. That'd be nice. I would, I would like to see that. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. So that's HB 1036. Moving on now to State Representative Aaron Pilkington's bill, House Bill yes, 1059. Sir. Tell us about House Bill 1059, Dan Borum. House Bill 1059, if you have, I, I encourage everybody to go out and, and read that bill in our leg, pull it up, uh, the PDF, and, and read through it several times and uh, study it. Uh, I need to read it even more and uh, to to gain a real good understanding of it and uh, possibly talk with Aaron if I if I can get the opportunity. I know he's very busy. But what we have is on our in our home or our curtilage, we have we already have in place the ability to protect our home, to protect our property, and if necessary, use phys physical force or even deadly physical force. There are many people out there who do not understand the law as it is right now. And I would go even further to say that uh, there are many law enforcement officers who still do not understand just exactly what the law is. If someone asks them, you know, hey, if someone is coming into my house, can I use deadly force? And, you know, sometimes they'll just kind of cock their head and say, well, I mean, you better be very careful about making that decision. You know, if, if you can if you can uh, retreat to a safe place, well, that's not true on your property or, or in your home. But that is true the way it stands now. If you are out in the public somewhere where you are free to be, you have liberty to be there, such as the Walmart parking lot, the way it is written now is that <clears throat> you have – to make a determination if you can uh, successfully retreat to a safe place. It's not just the duty to retreat, Paul. It goes even further. The duty to retreat to a safe place. Now, how hard is that going to be for people who are, who are in a very dire situation to make that determination yeah. when, you know, when, when everything – Everything happens so fast. Am I going to pull out my checklist and start checking off? You know, okay, um, can I do this? Can I do this? No, there's no way. You're, ha you're going to have to make more than likely a split-second decision. Am I going to use physical force or am I going to retreat to a safe place? And not only does this bill speak of protecting yourself or your family, but the bill also speaks of protecting others. And so... What it does is it gives us one standard regardless of where we may be. And that standard is that if we deem it necessary to use physical force or even deadly physical force, then we are at liberty to do so. 
And so, therefore, we support this bill 100%. All right, there you have it. The Patriots of X746 supporting uh, Aaron Pilkington's bill. Uh, here's the underlying portion, if you can scroll down a little bit, Joe, um, which means this is the new addition to the statute. A person is justified in using physical force upon another person in defense of a person at any location where the person is lawfully present. Um, exactly. And go out and read uh, the bill. The Go out and read uh, the law, the statute as it is written now in 52606, uh, 52607, 608. Go out and read the uh, read the statute as it is written now, and then compare to uh, to this uh, HB ten fifty nine. Yeah, and they're, uh, they're, look they're, at the amendment. This is what they're marking out. I mean, I think that let's let's read what it used to read, and this is what would if this passes. This is would no longer be the law. A person may not use deadly physical force in self defense if the person knows that he or she can avoid. The necessity of using deadly physical force by retreating. However, a person is not required to retreat if the person is unable to retreat, uh, unable to retreat with complete safety in the person's dwelling or on the curtilage surrounding the person's yeah. dwelling and was not the original aggressor or a law enforcement officer or a person assisting at the direction of law enforcement officer or with complete safety by surrendering possession of property to a person claiming a lawful right to possession of the property. Uh, so it, yeah, it goes, um, yeah, that, that is kind of a checklist that if you got, you know, bullets firing at you or you've got, <laughs> I mean, like, I don't, come on now. This is, this is kind of ridiculous. This is a well, common sense change. Well, look, uh, <clears throat> I don't know about, I have, I have been woken up in the middle of the night with uh, someone outside messing around that, that, you know, caused my heart to almost jump out of my chest. And, and I had to make the decision of what, what am I going to do? And, I, you know, I didn't go and, and, and pull up Google on my phone and pull, and pull the current statute up and go through the list of what can I do. My protective nature of my, you know, being the man in my home or the woman in your home was to take care of the situation the best way that I knew how at the moment. And what this, what this does, if, if, if you are in a situation like that and you do use physical force, then when you are, when you are in court or you go before the judge, you have a prosecuting attorney telling you that you could have retreated uh, successfully retreated to a safe place in this situation, it takes out that avenue for the prosecuting attorney uh, to convict you with a crime with this. So with the bill being amended, it, it removes that avenue for the PA. Yeah. Wow. Well, Dan Borm, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to this bill. I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, talking with you guys more about it and what else is on your radar and, it's been a already pretty exciting couple of weeks uh, in coverage of the 92nd General Assembly, and I really appreciate the work that you're doing, sir. Well, thank you, and we certainly appreciate the work that uh, you're doing in Conduit News, and we just thank you so much for the platform that you have given us. All righty. Dan Borum, Patriots of X746, thank you so much, sir. Be safe. Have a good day, Paul. All righty. Hey, folks, uh, go to Facebook.com, search for Patriots of Act 746, and become part of the online sensation today. Ask to become a member. Know your rights. Know what the law is. What we've learned in the last five years, unfortunately, unfortunately, is that we can't 100% trust or rely on our elected officials in positions of power, at least not all of them, to actually admit what the law is. But this grassroots group, has been proven right time and time again, case after case. And then the big case last year, the Taft decision, where the judge confirmed everything they were saying about your gun rights in the state of Arkansas.